you know, always looking to buy the dip because they know that the market will eventually go higher, right? Yeah. Although uh, Nikkei, for example, the Japanese mm -hmm. uh, index um, still didn't reach his... Uh Hey guys, welcome to another episode, A Trader Over the Shoulder. Alex uh, with me like always, and today we brought our risk management guy, Ruben, a uh, trader, and uh, he will tell you all about himself, uh, yeah, his background. Mm -hmm. So like always, guys, if you uh, didn't watch the previous episodes, go ahead and do that. We talked about everything from uh, risk management, trade management, uh, the way to succeed in trading, either day trading or swing, stocks, commodities, forex, everything. You can listen either on uh, Spotify and the rest of the platforms or go and check, it out, check us out on YouTube. We are sitting on a cool sofa in a cool office and <laughs> it's nice and warm here. So let's begin. Yeah, so we'll let Ruben in introduce himself first because yeah. uh, Ruben's got quite an interesting background. Yeah, so first of all, thank you for inviting me to, uh, to that podcast. Uh, yeah. Following you before, it was you know, very interesting stuff, talking about strategies, talking about a lot of uh, different aspects of trading. So it's kind of amazing uh, project. Um, talking about my background, uh, I traded option in commodities for one year and a half. Uh, it was speculation trading. Um, so we focused on trading options in, in commodities. Mm -hmm. uh, it was... Uh, a bit before the, the big crash uh, during the COVID. Um, so today we're going to talk about the beer market. Yeah. And um, we're going we're gonna... to... We'll, we'll go through We'll go through about what you think of what the situation now. But yeah, like yeah, Ruben said, it's... we'll talk about uh, the bear market and if we're in a bear market or if we're in uh, something else. I don't think we're in a bear market though, aren't we? I mean, it depends on... Uh... The what definition is, yeah, of a the bear market. Yeah, the definition of the bear market. What's the definition so, of a bear market? So like the classic definition is 20% down from the highs, right? Mm -hmm. The previous highs. And we're in it right now. Yeah. But at the end, you know, a bear market in, in my perspective, because I saw, you know, I started at 2008. Yeah. Like in the middle of the subprime uh, crisis. And it was a bit different. The... Um, the momentum, the negativity was much stronger than what I see at this point right now. Here, I, I can only see, you know, buying the dips situations. So mm. a lot of people are waiting for the drop just to buy more, buy more, buy more. And in case of uh, 2008, it was like melting down, um, breaking new lows. Today, we are so far high than the drop of the 20%. It's nothing, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, if I can bring something interesting regarding like 2008, in 2008 we see the VIX. Uh, if I if I go talking about some options and volatility in the market at this period of time, the VIX uh, reached around 80 uh, in 2008. Same during the COVID, the the VIX reached again 80. And today the the VIX is not going to that uh, to that level. Uh, it's actually stopped to 40 level. Today we are 27. The market is still going down, but the market in terms of volatility and in terms of um, fear, let's say the fear uh, level, uh, we call this a fear index. Mm -hmm. uh, the VIX is generally um, mentioned that. We don't see that today. So I agree with your point of view that this might be the opportunity to maybe buying the deep as we don't see a lot of, uh, of pressure like in 2008 and also on the COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess so. So. Um Maybe just uh, quick for those of you new to this channel and in, in general in trading, maybe give them just a little bit of an, um, uh, ex explain just a little bit about the VIX. The, or, VIX, yeah. um, the VIX is the calculation uh, of the uh, op two options. Uh, I, I won't talk about options in, in, uh, volatility. Uh, in volatility, but it's it's each, when you see the VIX going up, okay, generally it means that there is a lot of pressure in the market. The market is uh, bringing a lot of fear. Um, so generally, when the VIX is going up so far, you will see the indices going down uh, very highly. Um, so this, yeah, we will stay with the fear index. 
is the VIX. So it's the fear in the market. Right. Okay. So uh, different correlation, uh, negative correlation. Negative uh, correlation between the indices and the VIX. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. And you were trade. You were trading actively. In 2008, I just Mickey? started. Like I literally just started. I had two years before that that I learned a lot, and you know, uh, demo trading and stuff like that. Read yeah. a lot of books, but at the end, you know, like real trading, it started at uh, 08, basically. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't prepared to a real bear market. I didn't know a lot. Um, or enough, I didn't have enough experience to to really gain from it. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess it gives me, it gave me like a little bit of edge to uh, the next uh, years or so, mm -hmm. or the next bear market. Because mm -hmm. uh, in COVID, we also uh, made nice profits. Again, not as much as I wanted because it was very aggressive and very surprising, let's say. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was very fast, like two months. Uh, and then shot the straight back yeah. up, like a V-shaped reverse, yeah. or just straight yeah, yeah, yeah. down and straight up. And uh, this one is a bit better because it takes it some time, you know, bouncing up, uh, taking liquidity, is dropping down again. So it's not melting like in COVID. So mm -hmm. you got a little bit more opportunities to work. Mm. But that would indicate to us as well that we're in a long, longer term trend, wouldn't you say? That obviously... When it's a v-shaped reversal there's quite a lot of buying power a lot of buy people buying certain indices or certain stocks or whatever so it's actually quite good so you can you've got a lot of uh confidence in the market but at the moment when let's say you get these short-lived rallies and then they get smashed back down yeah you kind of people are kind of scared they don't know when to get in they don't know how to get in so it's a different a little bit different i think, think that the sentiment today you know a lot of Kids like you, young, young, <laughs> young adults like young you adults. guys. Young. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, always looking to buy the dip because they know that the market will eventually go higher, right? Yeah. Although uh, Nikkei, for example, the Japanese mm -hmm. uh, index um, still didn't reach his uh, all time high from, I don't know, like 90s, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Wow. From the last uh, real uh, it's crash. From 2008, I think it's still yeah. switch back uh, the top. So even if you bought the dip or whatever, you might be in a negative position on it right now. Mm -hmm. But in general, we know the the market will should continue higher, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it could take it like two years, could take it uh, one week or whatever. Mm -hmm. We don't know that, but uh, eventually prices will continue higher, and, and as long as the smart money, the big money, you know, institutionals, banks, or whatever, uh, big pocket uh, guys will be there, mm -hmm. then the market will continue higher. Mm -hmm. So I was quite new to indices and FX trading and all of that stuff. So it's kind of opened like a, an entirely new world of you know, economics and obviously cause and effect of different types of things that happened in the news, obviously have a correlation with what obviously what's going on in the market i never with crypto it just went up and everybody was buying and then obviously it went into that 2008 like bear market you would say yeah i didn't really understand the fundamentals between the economic statement around the world or whatever but now with everything that's going on how would you trade what's going on in the market how would you trade for a, for a bear market First of all, I really love it, uh, the opportunity now because uh, in the last few uh, months, just because it's uh, very choppy, yeah. right? It, it looks like half, uh, like a combination between Forex and a trend. Yeah. So you got a lot of choppiness, a lot of um, liquidity taking out, um, false breaks and all of that. And, you know, I really like to trade, um, like buying the dips or selling the top. Mm -hmm. um, but you need to remember, and I, this is why I lost yesterday. I had a uh, trade on the DAX and, and I lost yeah. like three grand uh, in that challenge that I'm doing. And basically, the, the reason was because I started buying the dip, mm -hmm. but at the end, it was a great support level to buy from. But at the end, it, since it, uh, it started to develop like a trend, mm -hmm. a downtrend, because of the bear market and the momentum, then it broke through the level and 
selling yesterday, I, I, I was looking at it as well. The selling pressure on pretty much everything was just incredible. But now you open up the charts today and the FTSE is one and a half percent up. So, yeah. so like for us, it's actually pretty, it's Amazing. pretty, pretty good, you know, yeah. pretty fun to, to trade like that. Yeah. For, from, from a day trading uh, perspective, you should be very disciplined. So if you, um, if you want to go into day trading and, and try to buy the support, you should go with a strong risk management, allocating the good lot size. You know that there is, there might be, because we're in a real market, there will be more uh, probability that the market will go through to attract some stop losses and, and then turn over, turn back into, mm -hmm. into, into profit. So yeah, if you go from a day trading perspective, you should be ready for this type of breakout. So you have to put a stop loss. Uh, you, you don't know where is the, the bottom actually on, on that dip. So that's the first thing. From my point of view, and, and because I'm, I'm still young and I want to invest in the future, um, when I saw the top of, of all the American indices, uh, after the COVID, it went up to maybe the S&P was uh, around 4,500, 4,000? Six. Yeah, something like that. And the Nasdaq was 40,000, 14,000, sorry. Mm -hmm. I told to myself, I cannot buy when the market is overvalued. Okay, we see stocks, we see commodity going down, we see stocks going overvalued. I told to myself, I cannot going through and, and starting a DCA plan uh, in this type of, uh, of market. When I see actually that the market is already 30% down mm -hmm. and we are approaching the top of the COVID uh, level that would be 3,300 3, in the S&P, for example, um, that might be, I see, might be the, 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 the technical level bottom for me, but mm -hmm. I'm still actually uh, starting a DCA uh, because we know that in, in the next years, and I still believe in the five years or 10 years from now, the S&P will not be at 300, 3,500, uh, but maybe 6,000, 7,000. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking in the long-term perspective, starting a DCA month after month. I definitely don't know where will be the bottom, uh, but that's my uh, type of strategy I'm starting to do. I wonder how many traders now are looking at the bottom of that COVID, that support level of COVID and just waiting to get in at that area. Wonder the, it's probably everybody's the support at of it. COVID. Yeah, where are we? Yeah. no, the, he's saying the, the support. bottom, the, the bottom, bottom, the bottom of the, the COVID, uh, yeah. and looking to job. get in, and looking to get probably in. a lot of yeah. The thing about uh, what Ruben mentioned is that you can actually right now that the prices are like thirty yeah? percent, yeah, thirty percent down. down you can buy it right now. As we speak, you don't need really to wait for anything else because even if the price will continue down 5% more, 10% more, at the end, you're averaging down, you're buying it on a major support level, even for the long run, yeah? Buying uh, on a major support level, and at the end, we should expect, like the history, you know, history repeats itself, so we should expect the, the bounce up. Mm -hmm. So if we're already down 30%, that's a great place to start buying mm -hmm. you don't need to go all in here you know take the um, the risk that you want to put for the old trade for the old investment and then and just split it mm -hmm. so buy third here wait for another five percent buy another wait for another five percent buy an extra and all of it mm -hmm. and day trading <clears throat> wider stops smaller position size less exposure or what would you say for strategies in, in day trade? I know Ruben pointed some out, but... Yeah, just I've been doing it, yeah. the same thing. Just the know. same thing? Yeah, just start small, add to a good position or add to a negative position as long as you know you have a limit. Mm -hmm. Either a daily loss uh, limit or a tra uh, specific trade limit, but yeah. Yeah, you reckon we're going to see oil going uh, under 80? Uh, today all is around 100 uh, yeah. and I, I read an interesting articles where we see um, I think JP Morgan tell, telling that oil will gonna reach 380 dollars per barrel and we have city banks that tell that because we're in a recession market the oil can go to 50 dollars so this is you know two opposite view two opposite analysis but today the market is very interesting okay as long as you provide uh, an analysis from your side and you, you think about what you, you believe, what about you uh, think about the market, uh, mm -hmm. that, that, that's a point of view. Uh, according to my point of view, 
we are in a bear market. We are talking about recession. We are talking about inflation. We are talking about interest rate hike. Um, I believe that the market already priced it. Okay, if we if we are done if we are done already thirty percent, the in, in the indices uh, the market already know that. Uh, and I will also add something about agricultural commodity because I'm looking about agricultural commodity like wheat, soybeans, uh, corn. Um, they are crashing down from the 2008 and uh, 2000 peak. 2008 peak, yeah. Um, we, we know that we have a lack of uh, supply uh, in food because of Russia and Ukraine. Uh, it's also, I think it brings a lot of speculative uh, investors and edge that wanting to edge themselves against the, the, uh, the, the indices into the agricultural commodities. Mm -hmm. And today we see that wheat already lost 40% from the high or 50% from the high in a very um, high Total volatility. Shot. Yeah. And, you know, this might be the, 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 the moment that the market, you know, can start a little bit to return uh, from the 30% low. 30% uh, low that we see today. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a point of view to have. Uh, and I'm looking at ag agricultural commodity um, because some people and some traders are still saying that we are in a high, um, in a uh, ultra cycle uh, mm -hmm. bubble in commodity. Like super, super cycle. Super cycle commodity. I also thought, uh, think about that um, before, but, but when you see whole wheat and, and soybeans crash down from the 2008 peak, um, it it's means a lot uh, about the indices and, and, and the overall context of the market. You like you like water companies though, Mickey. You've been buying a lot of. Uh, I'm uh, I'm packing. Yeah, I, I got like a garage at my home with like liters of liters of yeah. water. I mean, um, but you know, funny thing that you mentioned yesterday, you said you're listening to the news, Bloomberg or whatever, right? Yeah, talk and about you, depressing. Huh? Yeah, so basically <laughs> everyone is telling you how bad the economy is, uh, the world is going to end and all mm. of that. And when they saying that, the market throughout history at least proved that it's going up. Yeah. When they saying that all over the news, every single day, every single time, mm -hmm. every single moment. So uh, this is a great indicator when smart money is telling us on, to do one on thing. the news, yeah. Yeah, sell, 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 sell. That usually means buy, buy, buy. It's like Boris Johnson. I don't know if you've looked on the news, Boris Johnson's in some trouble for some silly stuff he's been doing in England. But I reckon again. the amount of again, you know, Boris Johnson, funny, funny old character. But he's he's about to get kicked out of Parliament, right? And the amount of people would probably be shorting the pound in anticipation that it's going to weaken the pound or something like that, maybe. Oh, yeah. But the pound today is just like shooting up, you know. And there's a lot of like fud, a lot of bad news. But it, normally the price action just does the opposite, you know. So it's interesting. Yeah, it's it's usually like that. We talked about it. Uh, market manipulation, yeah, the maybe. market manipulation. Yeah, well, what is funny is that you will see on Bloomberg, maybe one month, two months from now. Yeah, the market is on the bull market right now, <laughs> and the market is already fifty percent up. Okay, yeah, so exactly. yeah, it's it's, uh, it's uh -huh. completely. Uh, the and then news you go, is and then not you go on really Twitter. news. Yeah, the the, the letters not right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you go on news. Twitter and you see the total like ah, everything's just. It's quite fun. It's quite exciting, though. I'm not gonna lie. For, yeah, definitely. It's exciting, a little bit depressing, but exciting at the same time. Yeah, a lot of good uh, stuff for our head. Our head, you know. Uh, we will see the market probably moving higher. Uh, we will have great opportunities to to trade because at mm -hmm. the end, this is what we want to do. We want to trade. We want to make money from the movement. So it doesn't really matter if Apple will crash tomorrow or whatever at the end what we like to do is look at charts and uh, click on the keyboards yeah so um draw lines draw at the economy and charts. And all of that. yeah yeah so that goes to say then obviously you've got fundamental traders and you've got technical traders so right. which one outweighs I mean, uh, doesn't matter there's no uh, right or wrong right yeah it depends on your uh, style. individual style what you want to achieve are you look at the market you are like your point of view um the thing that Ruben mentioned most like uh, young 
uh, kids like you, adults like you, <coughs> uh, usually only day trading and all of that. But Ruben got a, a good perspective that also looking for the long run, you know, like 20 years from now, if you buy and buy and every single month, uh, that's a great uh, point. So what, what yeah. would you reckon is a good DCA strategy? Because you could either do it every month or why would like the way that i look at a good dca strategy is obviously having saving all of that money together and then getting in a key Fine. points in the chart like let's say if we're talking about solana getting in at 30 dollars mm -hmm. or getting orders in at 22 dollars those are the, the places yeah that uh, i get. thought about this perspective and this um you know buying when the market goes to this key zone and, and then when it go down to this key zone and then i I tell to my, I told to myself, it, it's um, it's better to do, to to even not look at the chart at all. Okay, you, you don't know where is the bottom. There is a support, but actually with the high uh, volatility, it can break down again. So you will never know. Even you see a, a trade support uh, in the chart, it will never tell you that the market will reach this support. You will not know that, and the market can break this support. Mm -hmm. So you don't know where is the bottom. So. On an automatic basis, um, uh, you know, putting around, I don't know, maybe one, one grand or two grand in the in the S and P each month, mm -hmm. and I even don't look at the chart. Okay, uh, what is important is the timing when you enter the market. Okay, I didn't do that when the market was at the top. Okay, mm -hmm. I weighed the market going back thirty percent down around that, mm -hmm. and then starting. Okay, so the market can still go, you know, ten percent down, twenty percent down. I'm still ready to to take this drawdown, but as long as I'm each month. I'm adding to myself, um, I will be good in, in the next years. So mm -hmm. that's I'm true. Not yeah, so definitely agree completely with that. Because um, at the end, not every time you're in front of the computer looking at the screen, right? You can miss the, the entry. And then you'll say, okay, when it will go back down again, then I will buy and stuff like that. When you're looking for the long run, you don't really need, it doesn't really matter if you entered yeah. like, on fifty dollars or fifty three or forty seven, yeah. it's nonsense. Mm -hmm. So just buy every first of the month or whatever, buy X uh, chunk and you know let it ride. Mm -hmm. no. and, and what is funny as well is that in this situation you are very calm. Okay, you, you don't need to look at the chart, put the you know make your analysis. You are very calm. You see, okay, it's an automatic uh, DCA plan. Mm -hmm. uh, you just had each month um, and. Also, I like when the market is still at the bottom because I told to myself, more the, the, the market will be at the bottom, more I will be able to add and add and add mm -hmm. into my plan. Yeah. And then, then when, when the market will go up, I will have like more... Yeah, the uh, average price will be lower. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And all, maybe the only thing you can play with a little bit because you're a trader and you do understand to some degree um maybe when let's say it's the first of the month and you need to buy a um, thousand dollar of uh, spy mm -hmm. and you see that it's perfectly aligned in, uh, on a major support level or whatever mm -hmm. instead of a thousand buy two thousand yeah. right so mm -hmm. just play with the risk management mm -hmm. a little bit but mm -hmm. at the end let it ride because it's investment it's not something that you something. need to play with mm -hmm. And it's always funny when everything's going up, you're always checking your phone, always checking your portfolio. It's going up, going up. And now, you know, you hardly check it. I hardly check uh, my portfolio anyway. I check it on a rare occasion. Yeah, you know, uh, most crypto. people are uh, lost like 20%, 10%. Yeah. They're down on their accounts. It's same in crypto. Okay. Yeah. We are talking about beer market, but there is a, a big, big beer market in crypto right now. And I started this year way before, so my portfolio is still down 60%. Yeah, I, I, told, I told you not to stop buying that. Huh? Yeah, but I'm still continuing buying each month because yeah, if enough. Bitcoin was 40,000 and now it's 20,000, even 10,000, I will continue buying. And if it's in if, five years, you know, BTC is a uh, you know, great that. technology. So of course you don't need to go into, uh, into Dogecoin and, and those type of crypto that are, there is no technology behind it. So of course you should be aware of, of which crypto you should invest. But there are a lot of very good crypto companies that have very interesting technology behind it. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you can start this year. When you buy the token of a crypto, you actually buy, let's say, the share of, of the technology yeah, behind it. I agree. Um, 
you know, it's it's the same. I had the same view in in, in Bitcoin and crypto so, as well. So which assets now uh, in crypto would you recommend, or you know, you buying or whatever? Yeah, definitely there is Bitcoin and Ethereum. That is the big two main one. Uh, and then you know there is um, all, all the Solana, Ada, all the, the top. Yeah, all the top coins. I won't put myself into uh, you know like very it's... small coins that can be highly volatile and can reach zero in the next few months. I got a couple of grand in Shiba Inu, waiting for that to pop up. Yeah, but you know, I don't Me see Shiba Inu. Uh, <laughs> you remember Luna? Luna, that is, yeah, we all bought Luna. That was actually, that was thanks to Mickey, actually. Cause Why is I, that? It was thanks to you that we actually bought, bought Luna because I said I wanted to get in uh, $1 and then I was about to wuss out and you said, no, you're not wussing out. And then... I bought some, then you bought some, then Ruvin bought some, then Sal bought some. Yeah. <laughs> and then it went from $1 to in about an hour, an hour to, to $3 and then $6. You got out at $6. Six, yeah. I got out at three and a half or something like that. It was, that's a, that was a decent trade. And now I think Luna is uh, insolvent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it gone. was definitely good risk management. Uh, a bit risky, but very good mass, risk yeah. management. When do you see a way that like Ethereum or Bitcoin, uh, those big names are, you know, going to like fifty percent more down? I I could see I could yeah. see that. I think a lot of a lot of companies as well, a lot of exchanges. In the DeFi market, you've got a lot of companies that are investing and kind of using like arbitrage techno um, techniques, where they're getting lending from this company and then. Right putting it into another platform to get interest on that platform. And it's basically just a whole big Ponzi. Okay. And as soon as one defaults on their loan and the other defaults on theirs, and then suddenly you get these crashes like Celsius. And I think it was the three arrows or, or whatever the, the other crypto fund. But when that happens, you can see a lot of companies going under and these coins that have already gone down, let's say 80%. Go down to zero, you know. The Celsius, I think, nearly went down to. Can't remember how much, but that was a huge, in the billion dollar valuation. Israeli company actually, oh, yeah. and you know they destroyed the the company was pretty much destroyed. You had Luna as well. You have a lot of these DeFi protocols that are just dangerous, huh? Yeah, DeFi is really dangerous. dangerous. Yeah. yeah. DeFi is good if you, you get in and something like PancakeSwap. I was always used to get invested in PancakeSwap where I had a return of uh, 100% return uh, on a year-to-year -year basis. And you could leave your, your money in there for like a couple of months and you get some really good returns. But then you take it out, leaving it for leaving all of your money in a DeFi protocol for years, is I think is just ridiculously dangerous. Risky, but yeah. There's a lot of opportunities in crypto for stuff like that. But what I'm saying is you've got a lot of companies that have their hands in every other company. And as soon right. as one falls, the others fall. And you've got big companies or big exchanges like FTX. And, you know, they've got a lot of money, consumer money in their platforms. If they go under or if anybody goes under, then at the end of the day, we're the ones that have got our money in that platform. And that's it. You know, yeah. if they close their doors, you've lost all your money. The beautiful thing about crypto is you don't have to leave all your crypto on an exchange. You can take it out. You can put it on a cold storage Agent. and it's yours. You know, nobody can, you can control all your crypto. You don't have to let other people control your crypto. The only reason why I say I wouldn't personally do that is just because when there's so many opportunities in the market right now, you want to be on top of those opportunities. Yeah, you want you know? to be liquid. You want to be liquid. You want to be able to, it gets to a good support level. And sometimes in crypto, you get to a good support level and shoots up within a, a day 30%. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that can really do some some goodness to your portfolio if you're mm -hmm. like putting in some spot positions, getting out as well. And you can start then DCAing more when you go down. Those little bursts of 30% are really good. Mm -hmm. um, nice. When you're getting into crypto, Mickey. Yeah, so you're getting me into it right I now. Get it, yeah. yeah, but maybe more of a like a Ruben situation when just buying every month, just bound just a little bit more, yeah. more. But I'm just I just need to understand. I know uh, you know the top five. Yeah. Just need to understand um, 
uh, which one to take in and uh, where to put the money. Yeah, I think the NFT market was a bit crazy. I lost a lot of money buying NFTs. That's that was the I mean, stupidest thing that I, I think I did. All an, of these pictures of that's another way to find. You know, throughout history, you got you got the market, you got crypto, you got NFT. But before that, you have gambling on horses, on goats, on uh, dogs, mm -hmm. on uh, games, you know, basketball or whatever. So those kind of uh, places where people just want to make a quick buck, mm -hmm. right? So NFT is, is just another one. There is an interesting you know? technology behind NFT, but, mm -hmm. but all the hype that even me, I can actually make and, and market make, let's say make a marketing of a picture in nft that means nothing you know yeah. and, and just make the marketing push up the price some people and some lot of people go in and, and push up the price i'm selling up everything and and you i'm getting the money and everyone that invests actually lost yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the technology behind it i see for maybe music and you know stuff like that hearts maybe yeah. it's Contracts, agreements, mortgages, yeah, it's, things like that. It's wonderful technology, but when you know. But right now it's just hype. It's not the yeah, real not. like economic it, um, place. Isn't, yeah, that, it's isn't that the best thing? You know, when you've got something like a hype stock, like you always like getting into those momentum stocks that are shooting up. Okay. Those are the the best, the most profitable things to get into, no? Yeah. Um, but again, the, it's it's your approach. I mean, are you gonna look for the uh, one lucky trade, or you're gonna do it consistent, uh, consistently over the years. Right? Yeah. It just depends on what you're looking for. Either way, both of them are are fine. Yeah. It just depends what you're looking for, what you want to achieve, what you want to do, uh, if it fits your personality and all of those. Mm -hmm. What other in the bear market, as they say? What other places can we put our money, other than? Other than like a good index or crypto, what about gold and things like that? Well, gold's kind of crashing down at the moment, but so what other what other things? So before the um, just after the market turned back from the COVID, the commodity index was the best investment and you know consistent uh, and best investment for let's say two or three years, and and we see today that the commodity in index might be returned, you know, from maybe we can make a, a small retracement because we didn't have any retracement in commodity index. And of course, Russia and Ukraine pushed up the agricultural commodity price even further. But um, why now, you know, when, and I like to see volatility in, in type of market, when you have an overextended movement mm -hmm. in one type of asset, it was the same for S&P, when we reached the top without any retracement, I won't put myself in a very low risk reward uh, uh, trade. So buying actually the commodity index might be too late. You don't want to be buying when your risk reward is one to one. Okay? Mm -hmm. You want to maximize. Uh, uh, so I know maybe wait a little bit. Um, indices are down. So we are still saying that it's the bear market, mm -hmm. but you make a lot of money when you enter in huge bear market generally and, and not when the market is at the top. So that's my view. Yeah, I guess uh, I like what Ruben is saying. Also, I you know maybe for the next bear market, right? Like the um, advice for the next bear market, just look for those. As soon as the price, let's say the S and P is dropping down, or of before it starts it, it moving higher, right, reaching like a peak, high peak, then uh, those other um, commodities or whatever it is will turn to the opposite direction. So when understanding that we're reaching a bear market or at the peak or at the bottom, go don't go maybe to the S&P, mm -hmm. but go look for, for the other uh, commodities that are uh, mm -hmm. different, like a negative correlation mm -hmm. and going to benefit even more than just buying um, the SPY mm -hmm. or the S&P. Because like in uh, COVID, when the price uh, uh, went down strongly, right? So after that, uh, oil, right? Or, mm -hmm. um, or, you know, the stocks from the um, airlines, all the UAL yeah. and DAL and all of those. So maybe try not to look at the market, understand the market, and then go to a different asset. 
Mm-hmm. You know? Actually, the dollar is is pushing up. Uh, definitely, actually, break a huge yearly resistance level. Uh, it's breaking up. Uh, but if you didn't buy, or if you didn't hold dollar before, it's actually break this this point. You do, you don't want to be in the market again. The risk reward. Okay, the market is on a very strong uh, uptrend momentum. Mm-hmm. You don't want to be buying the dollar right now, even. We, we, selling so, it as well. So no, what, so it's, yeah. Shorting it, you lose your. So lose your it's well. Not yeah. shorting the dollar, but what can go against it? Yeah. So if the dollar is picking, right, moving higher, something else is dropping down. Mm-hmm. What will be that something <laughs> the that will? The it's actually, <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. actually, there is a divergence in gold. Okay, you mm. see, gold is actually getting very. I, I I believe before that gold will hit a new time high. With inflation, with the risk off environment. So we see the dollar pushing up, but we see gold starting to depreciate. Mm-hmm. So there might be an opportunity in commodity mm-hmm. and especially in gold and silver. So that may be the spot where you should look for the next years to add yourself. I think. Mm-hmm. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Any other tips from trading in 2008 or anything that you would recommend somebody to? to trade now or anything that you learned in 2008 or even in COVID, like Ruben said, any kind of little things that you would suggest to somebody that's their first rodeo or their first time uh, in a bear market? I actually believe that um, our, as uh, as we continue to the future, mm-hmm. we will see more crises, maybe not a bear market, but crises coming in with high volatility, uh, to downside and also high volatility to the upside. Uh, the the phases between them should be uh, shorter. shrinking, yeah, shorter, and but the volatility should increase because there are a lot of other traders, you know, since COVID, like millions of new traders coming into the market, and everybody understands, let's say the, you know, that you need to buy when it's dropping down and all of those things. So there will be a lot of volatility, definitely. Yeah, it's a good thing. It's a good thing for us, anyway. Yeah. It's about for investors, but it'd be amazing for us. Yeah. We could what the book that we said we we mentioned to everybody. There's a good book that Mickey has read. I'm actually in the middle of reading right now, the playbook. No. Yeah, the playbook is definitely one of the best <laughs> books uh, out there. And thanks to Mike from, from uh, SMB, SMB Capital. Capital. Um, great uh, company and uh, it's kind of hard maybe at the beginning to read it you need to read it like a few times mm-hmm. you know those books is soft, uh, there are books that you gotta read at least like three four or five times to, mm-hmm. to really understand them like the one that um trading uh, in the zone no no the reminisce of um stock, of stock trade, trade yeah, yeah. so I, I read it like 10 years ago mm-hmm. and then i read it a year ago mm-hmm. and suddenly you know a lot of stuff that i went through the, uh, for those 10 years suddenly i understood even more wow know? so yeah there's there's a lot of uh good thing it's important to read it and then give it a, a minute and then read it again and uh, yeah yeah so oz oz is gonna put uh our editor is gonna put somewhere on the screen uh a picture of the book and definitely go and start reading. I can't give my full review on the book because I'm only halfway through, but so far and so good. It's it's really good book. Super but. good. It will maybe get you a bit confused sometimes, but uh, yeah, continue reading it. It's a great book, yeah. Any uh, resources or anything that you'd recommend? Where do you get your news from, actually? Do you even read news? Yeah, of course you read Twitter, news. Bloomberg. Twitter is investing that I'm ble- I'm reading from every Everywhere. staff, every articles and every type of LinkedIn as well. There is like good analysis that, that yeah, yeah. yeah. LinkedIn. Wow. If, if you follow some good analysis there, uh, they are putting some great uh, picture. Uh, mm-hmm. It's great analysis from Bloomberg uh, Terminal, and so so that's the main resources. Uh, a book that I read, uh, it was definitely linked to commodity. Uh, I I read it one year ago. Um, and uh, and it was explaining the diff the, the different cycle in commodity mm. and and when I read it again like six months or six months ago mm-hmm. I say okay these guys write this book uh, I think it was before the first big cycle in commodity mm-hmm. 
And all those things that he explained actually came up to the market again. Wow. All what he explained, what especially the, the, in the book, like it was written mm -hmm. maybe 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And what happened in, in oil and what happened in, in, in wheat and, and soybeans was ex definitely explained in this, in this book. I don't remember the name. Uh, it's on my table uh, there. But, we'll, uh, we'll find out. We'll put that in the description commodity, as well. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Very interesting. I like commodity. It's uh, something tangible that you can understand. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fascinating nice. by that one. Decent. Cool. Well, thanks, guys, for, for joining us. Make sure you yeah. uh, subscribe. Go on to uh, Spotify, uh, YouTube. Soon to be on Apple Podcast as well. I'll make sure I do that. I'll get yeah. it sorted. Mickey's always get it on Apple <laughs> Podcast. So anyway, to the next episode and uh, take care, guys. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Chef, 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 chef. Man, ain't nobody. Too late now. Or else he's going to kill me. <laughs>